Hi folks, today I wanted to share some ideas for water harvesting and conservation in common areas of HOAs. This is a first-hand account that includes total gallons and dollars saved from a five-year effort. But before I get into all the numbers, let me give you a little background on the area where I live. My home is in Tucson, Arizona, where we're blessed to be living in one of the world's wettest deserts that hosts wonderful hidden oases like this one in the Catalina Mountains. On average, the Sonoran Desert receives an annual 12 inches of rainfall per year, half of which falls between the months of July and September. This creates a tremendous opportunity for harvesting a resource that falls free from the sky and also offers one of the best times you can have playing with your kids. Whoa. Having said that, studies conducted at the Walnut Gulch Experimental Watershed show that in natural conditions of southeastern Arizona, a stunning 93% of that precious rainfall is lost to evaporation through soil and plants. Only 7% manifests as surface runoff, with only a small portion of that actually helping to recharge the aquifer. In urban settings like the one where I live, developed surfaces result in even less recharge. Instead, most of that surface runoff flows out of our recharge area via the Santa Cruz River, as shown here during flood stage in September of 2014. Some might consider this a loss, but I see this as a great opportunity waiting to be harvested. When comparing this opportunity to my humble 40-gallon water harvesting barrel, I can't help but wonder what I might do to increase infiltration and water conservation, not only in my backyard, but also within my HOA. For context, my backyard is located in Sweetwater in the Foothills, a planned community of 411 homes constructed in the late 90s located about six miles northwest of downtown Tucson, Arizona. I've been living here since 1998, and I've always wondered what I could give back to the desert for giving me such a wonderful home. My community is bounded by Camino de la Oeste, El Moraga, and Sweetwater, and has some really nice hills throughout that are served by two washes that drain into Roger Wash to the east. The combined area of these two sub-watersheds, which captures the majority of my community's stormwater, is 162.2 acres. Washes that run through my community serve as natural highways for a variety of Sonoran Desert wildlife. These just to name a few. Our residents frequently witness wildlife in our community, including a sighting of an ocelot confirmed via cross-reference in a Sonoran Desert Museum publication. Those washes are also critical to conveying stormwater, especially during our summer monsoons. In fact, our area receives an abundance of rainfall, with typical storms approaching up to one inch of precipitation during the monsoon. As witnessed in 2013, all that wonderful rainfall can actually pose some significant challenges with respect to our natural common area walkways, which are made of decomposed granite. During heavy rains, those pathways can host a torrent of stormwater, resulting in severe erosion, as witnessed in this photo taken after a typical monsoon rainfall event. This issue impacted our HOA's common area maintenance budget and neglected opportunities for putting that runoff to beneficial use. In response, I approached our HOA with the presentation on money-saving opportunities available through water harvesting. Although striving for a sustainable environment is important, communicating benefits in dollars and cents can have a more persuasive and immediate impact, particularly when HOA members pay monthly dues for common area maintenance and watering. This might be something to consider if you want to start a similar effort in your own HOA. In the presentation, I explained that the Milagro co-housing community near our own HOA actually took advantage of stormwater by storing it in a suite of rainwater harvesting basins located in common areas throughout the center of the development. This resulted in water being stored underground, making it available to native vegetation rather than the community having to rely on hoses and drip systems for watering. I shared this photo of rainfall collected in newly constructed infiltration basins minutes after a large summer storm. In this photo, the basins had not yet been mulched or planted. I then shared these photos I found online of how the community's common areas developed over time in response to all that free harvested rainwater. Because those photos only went up to 2008, I contacted one of the community members for an update. Interestingly enough, I was informed that the scene wasn't being updated because the area had gotten so vegetated with all that free rainwater such that there really wasn't much of a view to take a picture of anymore. I did finally get an updated photo as shown here and confirm that the community rarely waters their native vegetation, which also provides plenty of shade for nearby homes, lowering cooling bills in the summer. 
Given the successful demonstration, I suggested to our HOA that it consider hiring Watershed Management Group, a local nonprofit in Tucson that specializes in water harvesting, to develop a site assessment and suite of potential projects for our own HOA to consider, with the goal of engaging our community for volunteers to help us realize the same. And after a brief visit, it was clear that a solution was fairly simple. We simply needed to create shallow basins on either sides of our paths and then use the excavated soil to build swales to shed stormwater to those basins. So again, the idea is simply to create a shallow basin and then use the excavated material to create gentle swales that can divert problematic stormwater off to the basins where it can be put to beneficial use. Diverted stormwater will now be stored in the soil where it's now available to support seasonal wildflowers, existing vegetation, or new plantings. In my community, we're also fortunate to host a common area swimming pool with a parking area for use by residents. WMG noticed that the filter back flush for the pool was contributing to a head cut. And also that our parking lot was shedding water to a relatively bare area of the desert. And this was feeding another head cut adjacent to the pool parking lot. The board took note of the observations and approved hiring WMG to host a suite of workshops for members of our community to participate in remedying these issues. And in April of 2014, a crew of friendly neighbors and members of the WMG co-op came together to make a difference in our community. As suggested by WMG, we dug basins adjacent to our paths and used the excess fill to build swales that could channel runoff to the same. We slowed down the flow of runoff coming from adjacent yards by building these simple rock structures using local materials already available for the same. And then we worked with a local landscaper who mulches his trimmings and gives them away for free rather than having them landfilled. We use that material to backfill our basins with the goal of cutting down an evaporation of stored stormwater. Afterwards, we instructed our community landscaper not to remove this mulch since it's serving an important purpose in our features. Downstream of the pool's filter discharge, we built this Zuni rock bowl structure to buffer and slow the impact from weekly filter flushes. And then installed a rock apron downstream of the flush in order to further slow down these flows. We also rocked the area immediately downstream of the pool parking lot and installed a suite of basins and swales downstream of the same and then proceeded to plant the area with desert natives. And finally, we treated the developing head cut with a suite of one rock dams and media lunas meant to spread the flow away from areas suffering from erosion. All this activity took care of WMG's first recommendation focused on engaging our community for basin development and maintenance. We could have stopped here, but decided we need to form a water harvesting and erosion control committee to ensure that the benefits from this and other recommendations were sustained moving forward. And eventually, our committee and its priorities were adopted by the board. By the way, here's an outline of our committee's duties and responsibilities for anyone interested in borrowing ideas for their own. This committee was important in not only paving the way for future conservation and erosion control activities, but also to hold committee members personally responsible for maintaining these efforts over time, since sustainability can be a challenge after the initial excitement of accomplishing our goals has been met. This paved the way for us to continue working not only in common areas, but also reaching out to private property owners to install and develop features where problem runoff could be harvested as an asset. The committee also gave us the legitimacy to continue working in common areas to maintain existing features and install new basins along our walking paths when the need arises. We also worked in downcut drainages, installing low profile features that would help us arrest erosion and damage to adjacent properties. And we inventoried everything for the purpose of creating a map of sites that we could visit over time for monitoring change or realizing repairs when needed. And we highlighted volunteers and families that took the lead in pursuing water harvesting by writing short stories about the same in our community newsletter. And finally, we waited for the monsoons, and when they came, we went out to the areas that had been treated to photograph how the structures were operating and document if vegetation was returning to areas that were previously eroded and bare. And thanks to all these efforts, we had some good stories to tell, showing that things were working out pretty well in our common areas. Stormwater was being slowed and diverted for beneficial use, watering vegetation rather than contributing to erosion. And drainages that were formerly head cuts now slowed water, creating temporary pools for wildlife and storing the same underground, providing nearby vegetation with moisture for increased land cover 
and for habitat. What follows are some photos of common areas taken before and after our water harvesting efforts were realized. Granted, these were not all taken at the same time of year, but you'll notice that the impact of these efforts is obvious with respect to land cover improvements and erosion control. Needless to say, this has contributed to the overall aesthetic and sense of community in our HOA, which in turn has translated into increased property values, given that our HOA is a desired community to live in near Tucson. Although our water harvesting and conservation efforts have been successful overall, it didn't come without its challenges to make a difference in other facets of common area maintenance. For one, our HOA relies on a drip system for watering common areas and continues to do so presently. This isn't necessarily a bad thing if the watering schedule is managed properly and the system is maintained, but in our case, our system was about 15 years old and things like ideal emitter placement relative to mature canopy extent had never really been adjusted. Prior to our water harvesting activities, drip system leaks were fairly common, and since our community wasn't sensitized to water conservation, these leaks typically went unreported, assuming someone else would take care of it. In response, our aging drip system was repaired and completely replaced in some areas. However, even after our drip system was replaced, some committee members witnessed watering of desert natives the morning after a soaking storm, which kind of defeats the conservation principles we were trying to realize. In anticipation of the same, we included language in our committee charter to work with the HOA and our landscaper to adjust watering schedules. With respect to our irrigation system, our HOA had some old hard copy maps that a few board members had filed away. This institutional knowledge was at risk of being lost and was a problem because we really didn't have a good understanding of our irrigation system and billing. So the first thing we did after our irrigation system was upgraded was map out where our meters were located and determine what areas were being watered by respective accounts. We then took advantage of a service offered by Tucson Water to have our prior watering evaluated by a conservation specialist who would review our historical water bills. In response, Tucson Water informed us that we had an irrigation scheduling problem and that we were not following scientific guidelines for watering, essentially to cut back during the winter months when plants are dormant and increase as needed during our summer months prior to the monsoon. In response, we shared the report with our common area landscapers for adjustment. Finally, we set up a spreadsheet to support reporting out to our HOA board on how much water we were consuming over time and how that consumption was changing year over year. Since our Tucson water audit occurred near the end of 2016, we decided to use that year as a baseline for measuring how we might improve moving forward and started tracking the same via our spreadsheet. And this shows how we did in our first year of heightened sensitivity to watering schedules. Here you can see that in 2017, we saved a cumulative 48,623 gallons relative to 2016. We set up our spreadsheet to highlight meters and months where change was taking place relative to the prior year. Cells where we were doing well through relative water savings were highlighted in blue, and months where we were doing poorly were highlighted in red. Here you can see that we did great through the 11th month of 2017 with a cumulative water savings of 191,500 gallons, 
but that most of those savings were lost due to an extremely high amount of water use from our meter on Magnetite Lane. That extreme amount of water use was determined to have resulted from an irrigation valve accidentally being left open and almost eliminating an entire year's worth of water savings. However, we still came out ahead and the spreadsheet also helped us highlight where our system had problems. Without this kind of careful accounting, it's not clear these problems would have been noticed or elevated. To help elevate respective issues, our committee prepared monthly reports for the HOA board that highlighted problems. Here you can see that the relative water use for the meter on Magnetite Lane was consistently higher than the prior year, thus giving our common area chair formal data to communicate with our landscaper for follow through on this meter. Because of this particular meter, our performance in 2017 wasn't that great. However, having identified the problem, changes could be made in 2018. And here are the results. Here you can see that in 2018, our consumption for the year was 608,166 gallons less than what we consumed in 2017. That's a lot of water, especially in the context of Tucson water raising its water rates. In fact, this new attention to irrigation schedules and leaks resulted in a total savings of $3,336 for the HOA relative to what we spent in 2017. To put this in perspective, that amount of water translates to a savings of almost 1,500 gallons for each home in our HOA. That's about the same as 411 of these 1,500 gallon plastic cisterns, or one for each household in our community, only without creating a demand for the plastic or the associated cost. This graph shows what our cumulative water consumption looked like over time in the context of different activities taking place within the HOA. In fact, although our common area water harvesting started in 2014, the biggest impact on water consumption really happened after our engagement of Tucson Water to evaluate water consumption for common area landscape maintenance, and which resulted in greater attention to our irrigation schedule and common area leaks. Our biggest change in consumption occurred between 2017 and 2018. In 2017, you can see that we did well in decreasing our water demand during the monsoon, but that much of our savings were lost due to that open irrigation valve, which was essentially a man-made leak. In 2018, we had a poor monsoon such that watering was more intense during the summer, but we're still managing to save a significant amount of water relative to 2017. Because of the leak in 2017, I decided it might be more appropriate to compare 2018 to our pre-Tucson water audit, which took place in 2016. In 2018, you can see that we were watering less during the spring and fall and that our overall water savings totaled close to 657,000 gallons relative to our 2016 baseline. That translated into a water savings of $5,198 relative to our baseline. Not bad considering that Tucson water rates have been steadily increasing over time. And these figures don't even take into account the modest water and cost savings associated with 2017. However, maybe the water savings had something to do with seasonal rainfall. Maybe we had more rainfall in 2018 relative to 2016, such that we just didn't need to water as much. To test this hypothesis, I visited rainlog.org to see if we had any historical rainfall data within our community, and was pleased to see that one resident had been maintaining rainfall records dating back to 2016. Here you can see the cumulative rainfall at that location within our community for 2016, which shows that the total was fairly typical for our region coming in at 12 inches for the year. However, when we superimpose the 2018 data, you can see that 2018 was actually drier throughout the year, suggesting that if everything else were equal, we should have been using more water rather than less. This graph shows the cumulative annual consumption and cost for common area watering in our HOA between 2014 and 2018, and again highlights that the overall trend has been diminishing, even though yearly rainfall totals have also been falling and Tucson water rates have been increasing. This demonstrates that we're taking advantage of low-hanging fruit to make an environmental and a financial impact within our community and really makes me wonder what other opportunities there might be within other HOAs within the broader Tucson area, or even the state for that matter. 
Finally, I just wanted to mention that our water conservation efforts have helped our community achieve wildlife certification through the National Wildlife Foundation. To achieve this certification, one of the requirements is that we engage in education and outreach activities to include educating residents about sustainable gardening practices, conserving water, planting native plants and trees, composting, and more. Our community was the first certified HOA within the state of Arizona, and our water harvesting activities helped us maintain that certification through the present. In this context, we're fortunate that our community welcomes and supports Mother Nature's creatures, with at least 33 private homes having had their property certified as backyard wildlife habitat. In turn, these activities and this certification is helping us maintain property values, which translates into benefits for everyone in our community. At the close of 2018, I handed over the chairmanship of the Water Harvesting Committee to one of our board members. I decided to check in to see if the environmental and financial savings are being sustained, and I'm happy to report that even though 2018 was a stellar year, we're still doing even better in 2019. Specifically, our water savings to date have totaled close to 161,000 gallons, and our financial savings have totaled $1,640. We do appear to have some heavy water use on Tombolo in July, but by making our relative water consumption visible, we can follow up with our landscapers to ensure nothing is wrong with our irrigation system or our watering schedules. In closing, I wanted to thank Guy Brunt and David Koenig who helped us sustain these efforts over the years and continue doing so today by maintaining features after severe rainstorms and finding new opportunities for water harvesting. I'd also like to thank our common area chair, Bill Nicholas, who reflected our concerns and recommendations to our community landscapers, thus helping us modify the irrigation schedules. Bill walks our community every day looking for leaks and remedying the same when he sees them, so thanks to you and all our community and board members who've helped us over the years. I'll be posting additional photos of water harvesting features and changes over time to this channel, so if you're interested in updates, please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching.